chat i've got michael uh, michael you contacted us on instagram actually I've, was it the video where i said about how i i scarped off to brussels to, to try and fix my social anxiety it was yes and i sort of could relate to that of putting yourself doing something weird and wacky to tackle social anxiety instead of what I used to do, which was medicate it away with Dutch courage until that became a bit of a problem in my life. So, yeah, I, I saw that post and I could I could definitely relate to it. Well, there, there you go. So so the, the, the Dutch courage has in booze, basically. Yeah, that's it's, it's always been my go to. It's a very versatile drug and it's really easy to access. Um, and it, I used to think it was helping me through lots of challenging things and social situations. But in the end, it was making everything a bit more difficult. <laughs> well, a bit more difficult is probably the under exaggeration of the year. Um, I was, became a functional alcoholic for a good while and then ceased to be functional anymore. Um, so what I thought was some great um, social enhancer and something that gave me confidence, just it, it led to ruin. I couldn't hold down a relationship. I was struggling to hold down a job, lost my driving license. I nearly lost my flat because I remortgaged it for home improvements, but spent it all on alcohol and um, cigarettes, which went hand in hand with the alcohol. Um, got myself in a ton of debt. And wow, it was, yeah. And I'm still 18 months later, still rebuilding. I'm getting on top of some of those things. Yeah. Um, but in terms of mental health, I mean, it's improved drastically as a result of giving up alcohol and I think importantly for me as well it's um giving up alcohol has enabled me to get a more accurate understanding of my sort of base level of mental health because yeah. I've always struggled with lots of things that most people find very easy but also then found lots of things very easy that most people probably struggle with um and I've, I've put down everything to alcohol and mental health professionals they won't really be able to help you with um your mental health to any great degree if you also have an addiction problem because often addiction masks what your base level of mental health is so um i've had assessments recently and at the age of 40 i've discovered that um i am highly likely to have adhd and i'm going through that diagnosis at the moment well, okay. and I mean, it does explain a lot of things that I've struggled with my whole life, but for most of my adult life, I've just drunk it away. Um, and anything that I found difficult, I've put down to, well, I am drinking far too much and I'm naturally a forgetful person. And, but I would never be at the point where I'm actually getting an understanding of how my brain works if I hadn't stopped poisoning it, poisoning it every night. So how how did you how did you get to that point? Because it is is unless I'm completely wrong, I'm happy to be wrong. I, I don't know a ma massive amount about alcoholism at, at all. I, I really don't. I only know through stuff more to do with men up. But how how did you get to that point where like, I need to I need to sort this out? Because no, normally, just from my perspective of what I've seen, normally it's the missus or the or the fellow have said you need to sort it all out, else we're done. Had, had, yeah had, that's happened before but that wasn't enough and um my partner left and then my drinking spiraled even worse out of control because I had no one what I used to call nagging me and I, was, I realized actually they were doing me a favor and once yeah. there wasn't someone nagging me or trying to be controlling which is the other thing I thought so this person's bad they're trying to control me actually they could see I had a problem and acknowledged it when I wasn't willing to um, and I just got even worse and worse out of control until I was, my depression was so bad that I'd, um, I'd find myself just pacing around the flat, talking to myself. I was, often it was the morning after a really heavy drinking session, I'd become so um, depressed that I was, I would overdose on any tablets I could find around the house. I was going to bed with a knife under the pillow because I could never finish it off I could never find the courage to actually do the deed and end things yeah. so I think oh well I might find the strength in the middle of the night and if so uh, if I wake up and I want to do the job well it's there I've just got a knife under my pillow and I was sleeping with a knife under my pillow which is utter madness but to me it made some kind of weird sense at the time 
Yeah. So. Um, and in the end, I was um, been to the psychiatric unit a few times, and I got bored of it. I got yeah. bored of that cycle of crippling depression, going to the psychiatric unit, and starting all over again. And the I just felt terrible about the impacts it was having on my dad, who's seventy now. Um, because I for years I'd hidden it from him, but when you're being carted off in an ambulance to a hospital, either through injuries or through attempts on your life every few weeks, and you Well, wow. is it? But you, you're in a you're in a better place now, though. I am. I just still, I just, I do feel bad about what I put my dad through. Yeah, he's trying to have a retirement, and he's coming out at two in the morning. Wow. And what what to is pick it? up his son? He's nearly forty at the time. But yeah, I still get emotional when I think about that and. How I used to brush it off and how little, I suppose, I understood the impact it was having on those around me at the time. Yeah. So how 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 do you how do you get past that? I don't I don't want to trigger you or whatever. How do you how do you get past that guilt? You um, were... I think you you forgive yourself. Yeah. You have to forgive yourself and you you try to live differently. And the longer you live differently and you're not doing those things, the more you convince yourself and those around you that you're not that person anymore. And you eventually can draw a line and say, okay, that was that was me. I did those things. Yeah. But that's not the person I am today. When you first start, no one's going to believe you because they probably seen you failing a uh, hundred times before and they'll think oh a leopard can't change a spot but once you've been doing this for like a year 18 months the longer you do it the more people think actually i think there is a sustained change there and that helps you then to forgive yourself more well i think that's i, I think that, that's the main thing because obviously when we upload this video and all this kind of stuff I, I can only, I presume you're the same. Where if there's one person who's just going through that wobble, at least you're being on At least you're being honest and actually say, "Yeah, it, it's a horrible time." And yeah, you'll feel like utter crap. I, yeah, again, I don't want to trigger. It's just how I talk, so I apologise. But actually, you're you're now out the other side, and thing, yeah. thing, you, things are getting better. But 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 I'm just presuming. If if I'm wrong, I apologise. But no, I, I, they are getting better. Um, and I think at the time, I just, I, my self-talk was, okay, I'm going to accept that I'm going to have a really crappy three months, say. I mean, the the first three months of sort of sobering up or getting off of drugs, I mean, you're, you're having to radically alter your way of living. I didn't know what to do with my time once I'd stopped drinking because I hadn't appreciated how much of my time I'd spent either drinking or recovering from drinking or planning the drinking. And all of a sudden I got like an extra 25 to 30 hours a week that I have no idea how to fill because I have I've forgotten how to entertain myself. Yes. It's like, and you're, you're like a kid again who's bored and, <laughs> and sort of pestering. Things. And also having to come to terms with that sort of what I put people through and what I put myself through. So all of a sudden you become most people they've become very emotional a bit like i am today but that's slightly different i'm now coming off of antidepressants for the first time in a long time so i feel a bit i'm a bit fragile and emotional at the moment a bit, bit, bit wobbly yeah a bit wobbly yeah and like i reckon if i um i could cry at a soap opera plot probably today anything will set me off and i'll cry and something anything that makes me happy will probably make me a bit teary anything that makes me I just, I'm very sensitive. I'm pretty much menopausal at the moment, but that's just weaning off of um, an antidepressant that I no longer think I need because I'm actually generally very happy with my life now. Yeah. Um, and so if I'm coming across as sad today, it's just I'm emotional because I'm actually doing something positive for myself, for myself and getting off of an antidepressant that I've relied upon for my mood for the last 18 months. Yeah, so 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 you you you're coming out the other side. Yeah, yeah. And 
I'm learning how to live differently. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything anymore because I've actually got more stuff than I can possibly do in my diary at the moment. And I'm having to strip things away. So having gone from not knowing how to fill my time, it's it has gone back to there aren't enough hours in the day. And actually I'm taking on too much and I can't do them all well. So, and that's a good place to be because none of it involves drink. It's all healthy stuff. Um, I've got really good social life. None of that involves alcohol. And I enjoy it much more than I did when I was sort of wrecking my life every weekend in the pub or drinking on my own at home. It's it's a lot more fulfilling. It's I'm, I'm a lot healthier mentally and physically. I've put on weight, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm actually doing exercise. I'm going swimming in the sea. I'm going out for sort of jogs and that helps your mental health because you can't you can't take the two apart they're so intrinsically linked your physical and your mental health so I am in a much better place than I was yeah and and I don't feel like I'm done yet I feel like there's stuff to look forward to and things I want to achieve whereas that 18 months ago I was just I couldn't see anything positive in the future I had convinced myself that all I would get was more of what I had had in the past and I just wanted to end it all. I told myself, look, I've done it. I'm done now. Yeah. And now I'm not, I have, I've only just started. So you, you've got stuff to look forward to. Exactly. There's things I want to do, things I want to achieve. There's um, friendships that I really enjoy fostering. And I'm, I'm only just started. I think one of the best, something... Uh, a friend said to me, who's also in recovery, she, was, um, she said to me, well, the best thing about being in recovery is that we're late blossomers and we haven't even peaked yet. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like at the age of 40, in many ways, my my life's just beginning. I put my life on hold pretty much when I started drinking, drinking heavily um, at the, about well, the age of 18. Um, and I feel like I've been able to, I'm back to being that teenager again with, things he wants to do with his life and I feel like some of them are actually achievable and not just pipe dreams yeah no you know it, it, it's 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 refreshing to hear mate it, it really is and, and, and good and good on you really because I think this is why man up works because we, 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 we talk about the good stuff and the bad stuff but, you, you... yeah there's more good stuff than bad now and yeah, good on previously you, good on you. Yeah. I was there were there were good things, but I just kept on um, driving sort of. I've forgotten what the expression is: coaching horses through them um, yeah. with the drinking. So even if something started off good, I would manage to wreck it by getting blackout drunk and doing things that upset people and not even remembering it. And that's part of the problem with blackout drinking: is you'd wake up, you won't know what you've done, and then people who understandably very upset you behave badly in the first place and then doubly upset that you don't appear to feel that guilty about it because actually you have no memory of it and it's really hard to feel bad about something that to you just didn't happen <laughs> I mean well, you're just having to find out second hand what you've done to upset people and you get used to making apologies and excuses that people get tired of hearing but it's very hard to be sincere and in, in in your regret because you don't remember it happening but you you've rekindled those those relationships and yeah some of them um i lost my partner through drinking um yeah. but we're actually still on we keep in contact and we're on good terms um and i'm in a, a newer relationship for last year um there are some friends that maybe have fall, just fallen naturally by the wayside because actually we were only ever bonding over alcohol. We weren't going to see each other and connect. We were going to drink alcohol um, together so that we weren't drinking alcohol alone. Um, but, uh, well, that's, think, that's just part and parcel of life. Sounds like you just you just grow out of people, don't you? That that that's yeah. That's not that's a bad cool. thing, and I wish I wish them well. And yeah, you you just change your circle. And yeah. we've all got limited time that we can spare other people. And I understand that if you really enjoy going out to the pub, you're not going to sacrifice that to have a cup of tea with me some <laughs> a lot of the time because you've only got two days a week when you're not working for most people and you can't do everything. So, you, I mean, I've actively changed my social circle and I find generally that 
when you change as a person, you attract people who are similar to you, yeah. even without trying. So when I was drinking um, heavily, I was attracting people who also drank heavily because to be honest, most people wouldn't have tolerated my behavior unless they had a reason to be very forgiving. And normally that reason was because they were going to behave just as badly and would also require forgiving. So you normalized each other's behavior and all got into this. Um, I've been thinking it's like for using forgiveness as, as a bit of a currency. You know, you're going to be awful to each other. And then you can remind them of the time when they did something terrible and you keep that in your pocket and you bring it up when you've done something terrible. Um, so you can you can trade and then you get into this off this, this awful toxic. pattern of, so it is it is toxic, toxic. It's, just, it's that whole toxic relationship kind of vibe isn't it it is and that's exactly what i mean a toxic relationship doesn't have to be with a person i've often described and heard described uh, a, a, an addiction as a toxic relationship because it it might seem fun and wonderful at the beginning but it's once it's leaving you battered and bruised and it's taking all your money and it's distancing you from your friends and your families and you're just on your own with that person because you can't or that substance because you can't imagine a life without them then there's i mean the parallels are they're there it is an abusive relationship if you let it become one yeah no, absolutely good, good good on you mate I'm, I'm generally quite, I don't even know you, but I'm actually quite proud of what you've done, mate. You've really come out the other side and I'm well aware, yeah, it's a work in progress and all this kind of stuff, but well, well done to you, mate. It's like, you, it's like you've been reborn. <laughs> well, yeah, reborn at 40, been in a non-religious way. But yeah. Uh, yeah, work in progress, but I think that's all we ever are, really. Um, yeah, no, exa exactly that. that. That's the thing, isn't it? We're, we're, our, all of our lives just consistently change. We swap people, we make new friends. It's, it's just part and parcel of our life. It really is. But, uh, I, mean, I think uh, the idea of not being a work in progress of saying, actually, my job is done now. I mean, that's terrifying. Because what are you going to do then? <laughs> well, you die, you die, didn't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. So, so j just before we draw to a, a, a close, it's weird to say I enjoyed this video because it's obviously I don't, watching you getting a bit teary. And all, there, was a, there was a couple of bits in there. I'm like, do I pull the video? Like, do, do I make an excuse? But but actually, do you know what, mate? If someone... No. If, if somebody... Watch, to make. But if somebody watches this video, mate, and they're like... I need to sort my life out. I need to sort something out. The whole, the whole, vi the whole, everything's worth it, in my opinion, anyway. That, that's yeah, don't cut anything. You know what? Men are allowed to cry. <laughs> oh, no, we, we, we don't, we don't, we generally don't edit videos anyway. That, that's it. So, you know, just before we draw to a close, though, because yeah, we we'll flew through that. If somebody, just based on your experience, if somebody's watching this and they're like, that's me, I need to sort it out, well, what would you say? What would you say for them to do? I'd say, um to speak to someone who's been in the same situation if you have a friend who doesn't drink or if you don't know anyone who's in that situation find people i'd go to your gp i mean there's there's two issues you've got a you can have a psychological dependency without having the physical dependency um if you've got a physical dependency as well you've got to speak to a doctor because if you just suddenly stop that can be really dangerous and you can have fits and you can oh, possibly fatal yeah um oh. so you will need some help when you're um when you're trying to give up the booze that's something i had to do through the local drug and alcohol service because i was on a liter of vodka a night and if i didn't have it i was shaking and i did have some fits at some point so you have to do a you know, a medical detox if yeah. you're not that bad but and this is something i'm really keen on pointing out um you don't have to be physically dependent to decide that you want to stop drinking i i got myself into the point where i'd often go to my local drug and alcohol center before i stopped and i'd, I'd turn up and there's street drinkers and heroin addicts there and i'd think oh well i'm not that bad so i can't i can't be an alcoholic and at the same time, I progressively drink more and more. And I think too many people um, wait until it is that bad. You, have, you can lose your job through drinking and drugs and you're only two paychecks away from becoming homeless most of the time. So your life can rapidly spiral out of control as I did, as I said, I was fun a functional alcoholic for a long time until suddenly I wasn't functional anymore yeah. and I did lose everything. So you don't have to, if alcohol or drugs are causing a problem in your life, 
it's a problem take action don't wait until you've become that person who's lost everything yeah no, exactly. and I think that's it's probably going to end up the whole completely bit. I think that's the dangerous thing with alcohol is it's so socially acceptable and promoted and, I mean, and, and promoted yeah and, and, and it is weird and I, I put my hands up I've done it I've done it not many a few times I've been down the pub or whatever else and they're like oh no no I don't want to drink well come on have a drink yeah exactly people push it it's the only drug that you have to justify not taking yeah um, nobody think, says oh go you... on have a bit of crack um just generally or people don't push tea or coffee as heavily as they push alcohol and it's the only drug that i think that in the workplace gets pushed and that is just like a complete that's a really cool game because in so many work cultures you're encouraged to drink it's the way you do team building because it's often the thing that everybody loves is having a drink and so you're encouraged to drink and but at the same time you're also judged if you don't act professionally whilst you're drunk um yeah. and that's just a horrible game i always used to try to avoid work drinks wherever i could because i knew that that my behaviors i'm i get in enough trouble sober once yeah. i've got a drink in front of me i'm not going to maintain professional standards after my third drink yeah no, <laughs> and that, it's a dangerous game I, I dread like oh god there's the christmas do what am i going to do this time i've had to be carried back from that before so i'd then be nominated driver for all the future ones so that i didn't run the risk of um embarrassing myself and jeopardizing my job again so you're so, a liability <laughs> yeah i mean i'm a liability sober sometimes and i've realized now some of that's down to adhd um you get um risk-taking behaviors I can be a bit cheeky and like to push things until they become a little bit offensive or yeah, yeah, that, um, that, that, that line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's that line, which I, I, I just like to push sometimes because you get a bit of a dopamine hit from it. And when you've got ADHD, you're chasing dopamine, which is what alcohol gives you. And it's what risk taking behavior gives you. And I, I mean, the things that um, people with ADHD struggle with, like memory, behavior all the things that people with adhd struggle with are also the things that alcohol makes worse so if you're bad enough without alcohol if you're adding alcohol on top of it it's like pouring petrol on the flames i mean <laughs> you really are making things difficult for yourself and you've got a much higher chance of becoming addicted as well um so yeah if you you don't have to have wrecked your life already to start addressing a problem with alcohol if it's not serving you well anymore you just take action before you go down that slippery slope, I think. Well, I, I think in a nutshell, and maybe I'm being completely arrogant and naive or what, whatever, the second you say you have to ask yourself, I think I've got a problem. Yeah. Have I, if if that, you start Googling, am I an alcoholic, for example, that's a pretty good sign. That is, if, you, yeah. if you start Googling how to moderate alcohol, that probably means that you can't do it. And um, the chances are, if, once you've reached a certain threshold with alcohol if you've developed a problem only five percent of problem drinkers ever manage to then go on to learn to moderate and most will only uh, will find it a lot easier just to not drink it's so much easier to have nothing to drink than to have one or two drinks and then stop because you've already opened the floodgates there and you, your drinks demanding another drink and yeah. i just find it so much easier not to drink than i mean i spent about 10 years trying to moderate I always told myself I needed more practice. And the more I practiced, the more addicted I became and the more difficult it became. So sometimes just, it's yeah. just the easier option. Give up on it. You don't yeah. have to be good at everything. And it's OK if you're not good at drinking. Yeah. Don't waste your time on it. No, good on you. That that was a good call. Thank you. That was a really good call. So um, are, you, are you definitely sure? Yeah, because I'd like to just double. Are you definitely sure you're right with me uploading it? Yeah, I'm okay with that because it's it's real and people struggle and I don't want sort of edited stuff. I don't no, mind no, people no, seeing no, me no. struggle. I know you don't edit it, but I don't mind people seeing me struggle because we all do sometimes, yet we always hide the struggle from other people. And that's why we always think that other people have perfect lives and that we don't. So I'm that's happy cool. to struggle publicly. That's all good. And on that bombshell, I'm going to hit that record button or unrecord button. Bear me one second.